Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. Relative density disequilibrium finally explained. Boy, I thought they would never get around to doing this. Warning, severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out those oven mitts. Push the monitors back out of punching range. Let's light a dumpster fire and have some fun. At long last, Rachie 5 o is going to tell us how relative density disequilibrium really works. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Boy, I can hardly wait. You guys listen to this. PhD Tony to Sleeping Warrior. There is no force acting on the balls in Blue Marble Science's experiment. So you're calculating a force into existence and saying that force causes the acceleration. And, you know, basically, again, you're not understanding what F equals MA basically even means. As PhD Tony here says, there is no force acting on the balls in BMS's experiment. So, in Blue Marble Science experiment, there is no force acting on the balls. Yet you're trying to tell me there is a force acting on the balls. Amazing how you both contradict each other, isn't it? This is what you Globers do all the time. And then you wonder why we're like... <laughs> well, there's no inconsistency, Rachie. You're just taking a comment Tony made out of context. What he says and what I say are exactly the same thing. We know what causes gravity. Gravity is the bending of space-time. We know that. Gravity also acts exactly like a force. And we can treat it exactly like a force. This is what Tony says in the comments to my video. It is entirely valid to treat gravity as a force in a terrestrial setting. Indeed, in most places in the solar system. Now pay attention to this part, Rachie. If you're going to say gravity is not a force, then you cannot then say the existence of an acceleration requires a force. Got it? Okay, so I was thinking of formulas and I come up with a new formula for acceleration, but the previous one was weight or force equals the density of the object minus the density of the medium times the volume times the disequilibrium rate of 9.81 meters per second per second, which is the fastest basically that something falls in a vacuum um, without any resistance kind of thing, without minimal, with the minimal effects basically. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. You just told us that D in your equation is the acceleration rate due to disequilibrium. You said it has a value of 9.81 meters per second per second. That's an acceleration. Then you said it is the fastest something falls in a vacuum without any resistance. That implies a velocity. I think you meant to say it's the fastest something accelerates in a vacuum without any resistance. Rachie, this is the definition of what we call little g. You just inserted the acceleration of gravity on Earth at sea level in a vacuum in your equation for disequilibrium. Let's listen to it again. Disequilibrium rate of 9.81 meters per second per second, which is the fastest basically that something falls in a vacuum um, without any resistance kind of thing without minimal with the minimal effects basically so you've replaced the acceleration of gravity that we call little g with d which you call the acceleration rate due to disequilibrium but you haven't told us how that works we do know one thing we know it's exactly the same as little g according to your description so let's check out your formula what you've said over there is that the density of an object times its volume times the acceleration of gravity minus the density of the medium it's in times the volume of that medium the object is displacing multiplied by the acceleration of gravity will give us net weight. Okay, no problem with that. Remember that density times volume is actually mass. So what you're saying is net weight is equal to the mass of the object times acceleration of gravity minus the mass of the medium that the object is displacing times the acceleration of gravity. In other words, net weight is the weight of the object minus the weight of the medium it displaces. Rachie, this is Archimedes' principle. We've known about this for the better part of 2300 years now. This is exactly how this works. What you haven't done is tell us what causes this acceleration rate due to disequilibrium. Um, so yeah. Right.
So that's how you get the weight or the force by doing the density of the object minus the density of the medium times the volume times the disequilibrium rate in a vacuum. Um, so then you divide the the acceleration rate, the number that that gives you at the end of doing that formula. The formula gives you weight, not acceleration rate, Reggie. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> by the mass in order to get the acceleration. But there is another way to do it. However, if you don't want the force, you don't want the weight, and all you want is the acceleration, there is a simpler way. Then we can do the density of the object minus density of the medium times this equilibrium rate in a vacuum divided by density of the object, and that will, again, give you the acceleration rate. Okay, well, let's remember that D in Reishi's world is actually what we call little g. Reishi, you got a small problem with your formula. Remember this thing we call PEMDAS? You evaluate stuff in the parentheses first, then exponents, then multiply, then divide, then add, and then subtract. You needed to put some parentheses right here, otherwise you're going to get a really wrong answer. But with the parentheses in there, we end up with that expression. You get a net acceleration. No problem with that. Okay. The real question, Rachie, is where did little d come from? Where did g come from? That's the question. You need to explain that. So as we can see from the formula for acceleration, acceleration equals density of the object minus density of the medium uh, times by the disequilibrium rate, 9.81, divided by the density of the object. Uh, that is all to do with density of the object, density of the medium and disequilibrium. Absolutely nothing to do with mass, volume or gravity. In fact, it is only relative density that gives the acceleration. And this is how we prove it. What do you mean it has nothing to do with mass, volume or gravity? Rachie, density is mass per unit volume, and d in your equation is the acceleration of gravity, little g. Now listen, in your own words, you said you can't have an acceleration without a force. You claim that little d in your equation is an acceleration, so what force is acting on the object to produce the acceleration, and where is that force coming from? So let's say the medium density and the object's density were the same, and I will even give you 9.81 as gravity for a moment to prove a point. 10 kilogram meters cubed minus 10 kilogram meters cubed equals 0 kilograms per meters cubed times 9.81 equals 0 meters per second per second. Oh look, no acceleration. Why is that? Because there is no difference between the object's density and the medium's density. Therefore, no disequilibrium. The relative density of the two are the same, and thus the acceleration rate is 0. Again, proving it's all to do with the density of the object and the density of the medium, aka okay, relative density or dis, um, differential density, or whatever you want to call it. But basically, the relative density, so one density relative to another density, so just how left can be relative to right, it's one density relative to another density. So, again, proving that it's the density of the object relative to the density of the medium that actually causes the acceleration. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. So how does relative density disequilibrium produce a force, Rachie? How does the density of an object, and that alone, produce any sort of force? On the other hand, we can use Newton's law of universal gravitation and easily see where the force comes from, and it's totally appropriate to do that. As PhD Tony said, it is entirely valid to treat gravity as a force in a terrestrial setting. Now for fun, let's do this. Two years ago, I measured the radius of the Earth to be 6,370,760 meters by doing the Eratosthenes method. I ran the Cavendish experiment, and I measured an average specific gravity of the Earth to be 5.47. I also measured the universal gravitational constant to be 6.63 times 10 to the minus 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. If we plug those numbers into Newton's expression for acceleration, we get an expected acceleration for gravity, little g, 
of 9.68 meters per second per second. That predicted acceleration is within 1.3% of what we actually measure. So, do this. Using relative density and relative density alone, predict the acceleration for gravity at sea level on the Earth. Until you do that, relative density disequilibrium is simply gravity with another name. Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget the like and subscribe buttons down there. Click the little bell if you want notifications. Shout out to the patrons and PayPals. I appreciate everything you guys do. And I guess we'll see you guys on the next one.